itu. Okay, let's start. Insyaallah, Audi bila masyallahu rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, I mean, I'm quite tired about COVID-19. It is very depressing. Um, today, I was just arranging um, for my client to be flown home in the, in his ashes because he passed away uh, about one week ago. Um, COVID-19. So we do need to take care of ourselves, brothers. Um, it is something in which is very serious now, um, as I have um, forwarded to you regarding the um, one of our brothers who is in charge of the funeral. He's a funeral, funeral director. He is uh, counting the bodies of people who died, oh. especially you and I know someone, Kato. The, the, the Asians somehow or other are more prone to uh, getting this virus. So um, you do need to be very careful. This is a serious thing. So don't listen to all these um, videos who are undermining. It is it is serious because I have come across this. I have talked to some brothers who have COVID-19 and all this. So another my client, also a student of mine, uh, sick with the wife and all this. So um, do make a lot of dua to Allah. Everything is from Allah. So this is... This is our topic for Saturday, inshallah, on why calamities is affecting some people, right? So we do need to really be very cautious regarding this. Now, another now, no. So today we're going to talk about a very important topic about salah, right? Um. So my my important question is, when you know people are not praying well, all this, why? What is the main reason why they are not praying? at all or they're not praying on time or uh, their prayers are not perfect. Why is it so? Anybody? Um, like lack of knowledge, maybe? It is, but, but, but more important than that. Lack of uh, Iman. Even more important than that. Uh, not on Sunday Tawheed. Yes, completely lack of Tawheed. You can talk to anybody else about, oh, if you don't pray, um, you know, you go to hellfire, but when they don't understand Tawheed, you can do nothing about that, isn't it true, right? Because if you if you understand Tawheed, everything falls into place, right? Because people are busy, you are worried about COVID-19, you are lo using, losing jobs, and therefore you take whatever jobs you can even, you know, but there's a lot of people doing delivery, may Allah, of course, giving give them the provisions for the, the risk for these uh, jobs that you have, but it's not every single food that you can deliver is it true do you agree with me right always remember if you deliver food that is not halal itself right it i mean a lot of scholars say you're not allowed to deliver food that is not halal um even chicken is not halal you're not allowed to deliver it right so so you you have to be very careful with your choice of delivering food for example because at, at the end of the day uh brothers it's not just about having this money at the end of the month in your account. Isn't it true? First of all, if you know Tawheed, um, the risk that you have, the money in the account is all from our rob, right? Our provider, the sustainer, not from ourselves. And the worst thing, secondly, is that it will, the haram income will affect our dua, isn't it true? Um, thirdly, we, we know another part of Tawheed is his names and attributes. That the fact that he is our Rob, as I said just now, he is Al Razak, he is Al Karim, the generous one, the provider, right? So, all these kind of things, if you know him, then you will know what to do, isn't it true? Um, that you you have to really understand who he is, right? There are some people else uh, who are in the third category of Tawhid in which they take the money like their own lord. I mean, whatever, whatever things the money, the money say or they get, they get, they just worship the money and material life is neutral. People in Dubai, in my country, Singapore, this is all about money. That is like that tawhud. What is tawhud again? Idol. More, more words. There's five heads, no? I'm sorry. Five heads of Tawhid. Five. But literally, what does simply what does it mean? Something which you associate with Allah, or equal to Allah, isn't it true? Your Tawhid, like celebrities, like your TV, your whatever it is, can be Tawhid, right? Uh, even your shuyukh, your, your shuyukh, which you follow, that is 
very different from the Quran, which we saw from the Sufi side, from the Shia side. When Quran said this, you still follow what your uh, Sheikh or Shuyukh said. So all these kind of things are your taqut. So money wise, the money that you have it can be a taqut for some people. Right. So when you understand Tawheed, then everything falls into place. So, so for me personally, if you know somebody who is not praying, there's no point teaching them, okay, you need to start to pray this, 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 this. It's not just about the ritual aspect of the prayer. It's not about, it's not just about that you pray for one week, for two weeks, but you must pray, inshallah, until our last breath, isn't it, inshallah? Even when you are sick in the bed, is it obligatory for you to do a prayer? Yes. Yes, so it is obligatory, isn't it true? And that kind of thing, and I've seen so many times when they are sick, they're not even praying. Again, Tawheed, who is the one to, who is going to make you feel better? It's not the doctor, it's not the medication, it is Allah, isn't it? our Rabb, who is going to uh, cure us of our illness. So understanding Tawheed is everything. If you understand Tawheed, inshallah, whether you are sick, whether you are dying, you still want to pray, subhanAllah, right? Whether you have no money or money, or you have so busy with your job, you still struggle, inshallah, to try to pray on time. So this is something which is a very fundamental thing is that for me, the first mistake that people make in terms of the uh, salah, right? It's not even the salah itself. It's about lack of understanding of this first important part about the deen is about tawheed. And all of us need to really um, understand Tawheed very well so we can explain to others. And remember, all of us know that we don't have any prophets now. Right? We are the one who is supposed to enjoy good and forbid evil. Isn't it true? Right? That's why in Surah number 3, in verse number 104, Allah said, <laughs> So Allah said, So Allah said, So Allah said, and let there be among your group of people inviting to all that is good and joining right and forbidding evil and in this day for the successful ones. So it is our job, you and I, to remind others, right? I mean, you, you and I know me. When, I, when, when you first know, talk to me, um, I always ask you about the prayer. And this is what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always tell the people. Even, even he, in his last few hours of his life, he always said the prayer, the prayer, as salah, as salah. Always reminding us about the prayer. And something that we, we do need to really take care because the first thing that we are going to be asked on the day of judgment is always the salah. Okay? Now, and we also understand the next, the next fundamental part, the fundamental mistake that people uh, made is this word in the Quran, aqim is salah. Why do I say so, but aqim is salah is people, is this mistake? Because people think that, again, this is in relation to translation in the Quran itself. People translate is just performing salah. Aqim salah is not just about performing salah, it's about fulfilling all the relevant requirements of a prayer. Right? The most important part about the prayer is about that you should have, of course, besides the knowledge of the prayer, you must not, you do, must not do all these uh, bid'ah uh, uh, innovations and all this. You must have this thing called khushu' you know, khushu' means brothers, Sorry, I can't hear you. Submissiveness. Submissiveness, surrender to Allah, right? Remember in Surah number 23, verse number 1, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Successful indeed are the believers. Who are these people? The first criteria, أَلَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ In Surah number 23, verse number 2 now, right? The first quality, our criteria of person who is successful, means in Jannah, inshallah, are those who are able to pray with, so these are the so when you say aqimis salah in many verses of the Quran, so it's not just about that's it, done and dusted. I did my prayer, then I look up, look forward to the next one. It's not just about doing it for the sake of doing. You need to fulfill all the criteria of the prayer. As I said before, you need to have knowledge. It's not just about doing the prayer and. Um, with wrong knowledge, and I, I said this without any disrespect to any of your parents, Prophet Muhammad Sassam did say, right? Salu kama ra'aytumuni usali. That means pray as if you have seen me pray. Not pray as if you see your parents pray, not pray as if you see your grandfather pray, but pray as if, uh, like, as if you are seeing me praying. 
That means literally <coughs> our prayer, inshallah, should emulate the prayer of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Isn't it true? In terms of what to say, in terms of the timing, um, as best as we can, inshallah. Right. So this is very fundamental thing that we need to understand that the knowledge that you have, they must have a foundation from the Quran and authentic hadith. For example, in my culture, for example, I don't know why many people, when they start to pray, what did they do? <clears throat> they will say this intention out loud. So, for example, this, this is uh, what Sol, uh, don't know what this is, something about intention, right? And now I do something about intention loudly. So the question now is this, right? We discussed before many times. In acts of worship, everything is haram, not allowed, unless you find the source in the Quran and in authentic hadith. So I can't say anything or do anything if I don't have this source, uh, or can't find the source in the Quran or in authentic hadith. I cannot simply give an excuse, or oh, actually it's my imam who told me this, or, or actually my mom taught me this. And I heard it so many times, right, that... Um, yeah, I did because my, my, my parents taught me that, right? And it's completely wrong. You have to remember this, right? For example, in my culture, again, when you sit your, so they will say, um, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, uh, no, Allahumma salli ala, ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad. So they, they add the word Sayyidina, which means like a master, right? Now, if you look at the hadith, is there anything that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to put Sayyidina there? No. Right? So, you should not add in anything extra, even though it may glorify the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam status as a master, which is true. But he taught us, and whatever, whatever things that he taught us all come from Allah. So, we do need to stick strictly to what we see in the Quran and authentic hadith. At the same time, we... We follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayer. So when he taught us or he taught the Muslims to pray and the Sahaba to pray, it must be very similar to what we are doing now. It cannot be completely different. Then if not, then we end up uh, committing an act of innovation right? that, that will completely be um, uh, this allowing you and I to enter paradise because innovation is a huge thing. Shaitan loves innovation. We know we know about this. It's one of his favorites because innovation is something that um, a person would not actually ask Allah to uh, forgiveness because to him he did the right thing, right? In major minor sins, you know it's a sin, so you feel very guilty. You would want to ask Allah for forgiveness, but this innovation, something in which you think, oh. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's, everybody's before they say their prayer, uh, they do their prayer before they say Allah Akbar, they will say, now why do something? Intentions loud. And you just follow. Right? So do be careful in this, brothers, because as I said just now, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, right? Usali. Pray as you see me pray. But, so that is how we are supposed to form, form our prayer. Right? Not according to uh, sources even from our parents that has no evidence at all. If you know that, and and if you know that what you have done is completely or it may be different from the Sunnah, then it is your duty to change. Isn't it true? You can't completely or you can't insist on following uh, what your parents have taught you, right? Because, for example, in Surah number five, if I'm not mistaken, in verse number one zero four, right? Because in Israel number 5, in verse number 104, some people were, were, were insist, insisting to follow uh, what they have been taught by their forefathers, right? Let's go through this surah. We have been through this before a few times, right? وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْا إِلَى مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ وَإِلَى الرَّسُولِ قَالُوا حَزْبُنَا مَا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا and when it they said to them, come to what Allah has revealed and unto the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they say enough for us in which we find our forefathers are doing. Right? And this is this is something very fundamental and it's difficult for me sometimes to correct the people in my side of the world because for them, it has been ingrained in themselves. But subhanAllah, wrong is wrong. You cannot justify the wrongness that you do. Right? That is why Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sorry, Allah has came up um, after the last uh, sermon of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave this beautiful 
a verse in surah number five, verse number three, is it? Al yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmaltu alikum ni'mati wa raditu lakum islam adina. This day I have perfected your religion for you. I have completed my favors for you and I've made Islam as your way of life. So technically Islam was complete. So it's not up to you and I to add something yeah, in, in terms of your prayer in order to either beautify it or trying to make it better to according to you. Because the prayer has been taught to us perfectly by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So just stick to or follow the things that we have in authentic hadith. Right, so that's very important for all of us to understand. Now, any questions so far, brothers? Okay, so if no question, let, let's move forward about other, other things in which I, I haven't even come to the prayer yet. In what are the mistakes? So these are the things that you, people are always not understanding. Brothers, for example, if you yourself find that oh, it's difficult for me to pray five times a day, it's difficult for me to extract myself from my work, always come back to Tawhid again. Perhaps your understanding of Tawhid is not good enough. Because if you understand Tawhid completely, your work, your boss is not important. Most important thing is, is our Rob. Isn't it true? So it's something you, you have to find your own solution. You cannot blame your... Uh, on the day of judgment, cannot blame, oh, I can't pray because of this, this. You have to blame yourself, right? While we are still breathing, alhamdulillah, we, you and I, we do need to make this fundamental change if we find that our prayer uh, is uh, is inadequate, right? As last week, we have discussed about zakat. Now we're going to concern about our salah, inshallah, okay? Now, the next mistake, of course, is about those who... Um, the cultural influence, as we discussed just now, you have this culture that, um, for example, after the prayer, you have this obligatory, or do you have this congregation, and you, and some people are even worse. I don't know why Singapore have come up with worse and worse things. After the salah, if you go to the mosque in general, right, um, they would stand up, they would say this in a circle and all this, they would send salawat to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Where did they get this from? Right? So, so we do need to understand what is the truth and what is culture. You cannot mix this together. Right? It doesn't work like that in Islam. We do need to understand uh, how did the Prophet Muhammad Sallam pray? After the prayer, did he has all this uh, dhikr in congregations or dua in congregations? They actually, they actually stand up and everybody is in a circle and they will recite the salawat to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Did he do that? If he doesn't do that, then it's not up to you and I to do things that has no evidence, isn't it true? Right, so culture sometimes culture your culture and my culture sometimes are very very deviant in terms of the practice of our salah, right? So it is something that we do need to extricate ourselves from the culture if we find that the culture is not compatible to the salah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay. Now the next next mistake is for me personally, I find is that we, well, we are not grateful enough to Allah. Why do I say so? Brothers, the fact that Allah is inviting you and I to meet him five times a day, and of course, if not more for the sunnah prayers, so five times a day minimum, it is a huge honor that Allah wants to us to come back to him. And this itself is a huge, we should be grateful to him, right? That we are invited. Not all the previous nations have no invitation. We talk directly to Allah. Right. In fact, some of the previous nations they have to talk to the prophets so that they can the prophets can make dua to Allah, right? Uh, but for us, it, we talk directly to Allah, and it's very important for all of us to really understand this, right? That this is the privilege that Allah has given us. After all, we, aren't we the best nations, right? Which surah did we Allah said we were the best nations, brothers? Anybody? Is it uh, Baqarah? No, not every is Baqarah. No, for it. No, I thought um the the middle middle nation, but it's different, right? The no, that's and... that's Wasalta. That is that is the middle yeah. nation. Yes, Wakadalika Jaangum Umma Wasalta. Right, this is the middle. Wasat means middle. Is Surah is number where, three, verse three, right? Where, verse number. Where we're, where we're, because we um enjoying good forbid evil. Yes. Yeah. But, in Surah number 3, verse 110, it's a huge honor for you and I 
kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhauna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah you are the best nations ever raised up for mankind because why because you enjoy good for be evil and you believe in Allah right so as i said just now we have no more prophets to seek for us to seek guidance or to tell the people about the do's and the don'ts it's up to us that's why we are the best nations because it is a, a incumbent upon you and i inshallah to remind others about the truth right about islam about salah about fasting and all this okay so so one of the things in which uh, a common mistake is that you do not make the salah as the center of your activities that means if you truly value the salah if you truly are grateful to allah you will ensure that nothing or no programs at all will revolve around the time that the salah comes and you make this uh, or and you will look forward to this moment of meeting with allah and this is so important that it's not just about okay to get it over and done with oh okay i have about five minutes um then that's the time i do my prayer or worst thing right you have all this football right in the summer and all this sometimes oh okay we only pray we, we start we'll we'll pray when come the half time right then we can pray subhanallah where is the importance of allah in your life and all of us must really reflect upon it ourselves right the salah must be the center or the core of your activities you and i should alhamdulillah first of all not just be grateful to allah but look forward to meeting with allah all the time and and we must prepare ourselves okay i have only half an hour to do my work until the next prayer i better do work quickly and then make sure you try to do on time inshallah remember allah said i think in surah number two verse number two three eight hafidhu ala salawatin wa salatil wa salatil wusta guard strictly your prayer especially the middle prayer and we know the middle prayer is the asar prayer right asar prayer. we're going to talk about it later inshallah asar prayer is so important if you miss the asar prayer it's as if you miss i mean you lost your family and your property right in the authentic hadith so we do need to to ensure that our salah prayer especially is is no excuse no matter how how busy you are allocate a time and don't be like hypocrites what did what did hypocrites do brothers in hadith you know this they they leave last minute sheikh last minute of the one uh, yes. salad they they pray just before the asar prayer right just before sunset and even then they do it just very quickly right and this is this is how the hypocrites pray my the only another 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 part of the quran on the hadith is that it was stated that they only pray to be seen by men right and they don't remember allah much it's just a show and and we cannot do this one of one of the things that how we know that our prayer is sincere inshallah is that whether you pray alone or you pray in a congregation congregation in the mosque the amount of khushur and excitement to meet allah the amount of preparation is the same doesn't mean that people are seeing you in the mosque and you have more khushu and you're praying along completely you know nobody knows you right so you it's the speed you, you pray within three, three minutes to finish everything um you are not even focusing on your recitations because nobody sees you anyway right so you don't care allah is al alim the all knower allah is uh al basir the all seer al khabir the, the all aware allah knows everything Right, so again, Tawheed again is neutral. Right, if you know Tawheed, nothing else will 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 bother you. You will want to focus on our uh, meeting with Allah. Okay, so do do ensure, inshallah, that you you look forward to the prayer. I mean, for me personally, for example, um, morning prayer. Right, morning sometimes you yeah, you want to go to the toilet and all this. I I make sure that okay, I'm going to meet Allah. So I would wear perfumes i would dress nicely and not even the button should be like this when you pray because you're not meeting allah I'm, I'm not saying you can't do prayer like this of course but you are meeting your creator how can you not dress properly button up right make sure everything is nice right wear socks hairs comb properly right and this is how you should do it's neutral if you want if you have an appointment with uh, the prime minister number 10 in, in in with the queen elizabeth or even with your own boss as if you are going to 
to dress with one button untied like this and meet your boss. Isn't it true? And But this now you're meeting Allah. You have to have this image in you that, okay, I want, I want to go to meet Allah. I would wear my perfume. I would dress nicely. I make sure that nothing distracts me, right? I will make sure that, inshallah, um, that I'm able to focus properly, right? The, the, the temperature must not be so cold. If it's cold, I need to wear my socks so that I can have khushu in Allah. Isn't it true? Right? Because you have, you must prepare to face Allah, inshallah, with the most fullest focus and concentration, which is khushu. Right? Nothing should distract you. If you know that, well, in the other room, the TV is on, you need to switch it off. So the environment must be perfect. And this is very important for you and I to uh, to prepare to fit. And this is the mistake that people are doing. Assalamu alaikum. Right? That, that you are completely thinking that you are talking to no, nobody else. It's just a ritual that you are doing. It's, it's completely wrong. Right? Even when we do our prayer, we know, we know for a fact, we discussed this a few times. Now, quiz question. Right? And you know this, I hope. Yeah? That when we say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, what is Allah answering us? What is his answer? Right. My servant has praised me. Yes. So when we say, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, what, what is Allah's answer? He has glorified me. Maliki Yom uh, He has, um, he's noticed that I am the owner. He, uh, that yes. all to him, so to he, he's exalting domain. me to putting me on a high state, yeah. right? Yeah. When we say Iya uh, kana wa Iya kana stain, then he says, uh, uh, "Whatever my servant will ask for, I shall give him." Well, it's a bit exaggerated, isn't it? True. This between <laughs> me and my servant, and my ser servant shall have what he asked for. Nine out of ten. Okay, eight and a half. And then when you say Ihdina Siratul Mustaqim until Allah Dalin, what's Allah's answer? Same thing. This is between me and my servant, and my servant shall have what he asks for. So what we're asking for is this guidance, isn't it true? Not just any guidance. We want that straight path. Okay, quiz question. What is the straight path? Brothers, I discussed this last week. You must know what is the straight path. The part, oh, go ahead. It is the mustaqim, isn't it? The sirat, the... It is, it is. But what is the straight path? It is very detailed in some surah, in one of the surah we discussed last week. You must know what is straight path. You might you need to know, right? What is the straight path, right? What, what must I do to get the straight path? Isn't it true? Haider, the, the Quran and the Sunnah, isn't it? No, it's specific in the Quran, Allah said, this is my straight path. Is our 10, what? What what was given to Musa alayhi salam? Um, guidance. Commandment, isn't it? The commandments, eh? Yeah, ten, it's yeah. our Ten Commandments. We discussed for so many times. Our Ten Commandments given to us in Surah number 6, verse number 151 and 152 and 153. Right? And this is the straight path. Of course, the first thing is about no shirk, isn't it true? Right? Because once you are shirk, yes, you... Is this, you're not in a straight path. We want that straight path. No sure. It's only Allah who is guide, guiding us in it. True. So something that we did, we do need to know in detail. And when we ask for this, what? Allah did say, this is between me and my servant. My servant shall have what he asked for. When, so when you know this hadith, literally, inshallah, you are trying to have a conversation with Allah. In very conversation, you must very nicely. You must be in the best position. You must, you must be very relaxed. Nothing distracts you. No TV. No conversations. You must, inshallah, try to do out your best in, in to earn this ability to face Allah in the best of manner, inshallah. Isn't it true? So it's very important that you and I, we have this. It's not just about, okay, I want to pray. That's it. Full stop. Finish. I'll go back to my activities. So it's like you, you have to look forward to your meeting with Allah and you have to, inshallah, think, okay, what shall I ask Allah now? Perhaps I want to ask Allah about this for my parents, for my children. You do know what I mean? Because the prayer is something what you ask Allah in your prostration. What what is the hadith about prostration in terms of dua? Yeah, Brothers, it's one of the best places to make dua. 
Um, yeah, but, but what's the hadith? Is we are correct? You're not wrong. What's the hadith? You're the closest. You're the closest to Allah uh, in terms of um, worship. Okay, so, so you're the closest to Allah, and then therefore uh, make many dua. Is it true? Mm -hmm. Make a lot of dua. This is an authentic hadith. Muhammad SAW said the closest a person is to Allah is in his prostration. So therefore, make plenty of supplications, right? So all I'm trying to say is not just about that bodily movements and ritual of prayer. It's a lot of preparations. It's a lot of um, excitement. One want to meet Allah. Alhamdulillah, right? At least I'm invited by Allah. Always remember, if you are not praying, brothers, you uh, have not been invited by Allah. Full stop. What a wonderful thing that Allah is inviting us. Despite our mistakes, despite our sins, despite our numerous shortcomings, Allah still invites you and I to, to pray. And it's a huge thing, right? Because once our last breath, the, 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 um, our soul is at the throat, finished. Game over. It's intro. No repentance is accepted. So when you have this, this attitude that you have, making the prayer as the center of your uh, attraction in the day, right? looking forward to it, preparing yourself, right, making yourself nicely smell, knowing what you are saying, um, planning what you want, you want to make dua to Allah. It makes a huge difference in your prayer, and this is something a lot of people are not aware of this, because people think that okay, this is just prayer. They sit once it. Uh, I knew I only got five minutes, right? I have to go to work after this. Quickly do the prayer, rush, and come back again. How can the prayer be? accepted in some of these prayers when you are rushing through things right remember one of the prayer what is the hadith about a prayer when muhammad was asking this person to, re to repeat three times what did he do he just told, told the that you didn't pray so go pray again isn't it yes why he didn't his bones <laughs> weren't still Yes. He rushed the movement. Rushing oh, through prayer, right? And this is this is we, we discussed many times, right? About the this is called the pillar of the prayer, right? The prayer is divided into three 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 kinds of principles: the pillar, the obligatory part of the prayer, sorry, the obligatory part of the prayer, and the sunnah part of the prayer, right? Pillar means if you leave it out, it will nullify the prayer automatically. Right? One of the pillar of the prayers is that when you are in different positions. And when you're, your bone must be rested. So when, especially the two positions in which people are always rushing, right? One is Islami Allah Kuliman Hamidah, because you only need to say Rabbana wa lakal ham. Immediately before standing up straight, you go to your prostration. This may nullify your prayer because your your bones are not still. Another position is in between two prostrations, right? Again, some people just say Rabbi Khfirli, which is valid, of course. Twice Rabbi Khfirli. But by the time you finish this quickly, before you stand, you, you are say, saying, probably clearly, you already go to your next position in which your bones were not resting fully, and that will invalidate your prayer. What a waste if you are first invalidated. Brothers, on the day of judgment, what are we going to say um, when we are running around? We're going to say, Ya Nafsi Nafsi. Right, we're going to run away from our brothers, from our fathers, our mothers, and fathers. We're going to run away from everybody. The scholars say perhaps we have so little deeds to show to Allah that we do not want people to ask for your deeds. And this is where every single thing that we do now, we have to be, we have to be, um, what do you call it? Uh, make sure it's done properly. And inshallah, these, these deeds are in our back to present to Allah on the day of judgment. So we do need to be very um, cautious and very prudent and very prepared about the prayer, right? That's why seeking knowledge is obligatory, isn't it true, right? Um, the, on, on the prayer, it's not about, as I said before, what your parents taught you, about your your culture taught you. It's what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi taught us. And make sure we know this, inshallah. Okay? Now, other things include... Um, they don't even, uh, uh, people, the common mistakes, they don't attempt to know every single thing that you recite in Arabic in your prayer. Brothers, you are, we are talking to Allah in our prayer. How can we don't understand anything at all? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm in charge of another group, a lot of youth in the group. 
So they're talking about all the all this hadith, this a uh, lot about do's and don'ts, and so they are into my, in my class for Iqra lessons, for example, right? Um, so ask them simple questions in about the prayer. So what is iya kana do iya kana saying? They don't know. What is ihdina sirat al mustaqim? They are not sure. So how can in the chat group you are so busy talking about this rule, this is haram, this is halal, but your prayer you are not even sure about the prayer. How can this be? Right? We know to, we need to know every single thing that we say. It's not difficult, inshallah, isn't it true? You just need to put in effort, firstly. Ask Allah to help you, inshallah, and make sure you repeat it again and again, inshallah. It's not difficult. But the fact that people, and this is where sometimes um, some people have been taught, especially the reverts, right? That, oh, it's okay, do it in Arabic first. Make sure you memorize in Arabic, then, then you know the meaning later. No, know the meaning first, then you say in Arabic. That is much more effective in terms of because you are communicating to Allah in your prayer. Okay. Now, um, now the next mistake. I'm not I haven't even touched the prayer at all. All right. The next mistake people make, brothers, is that, well, ever since you were small, you only know Qul Allah, Al Falak, and Nas. So 30 years later, you got married, you got children, you only know Qul Allah, Al Falaq, An Nas. That's it. No attempt to know more things. No attempt to know more. Even that, right? If you ask them, so how is how is uh, how is this? What did it, for example in the uh, Al Ikhlas, right? Qul Allah. Well, so why is there a Qul there? Nobody knows. How can it be? Because this, for example, al class, it is it is equivalent to one third of the Quran, right? You don't need this to know everything because then you can feel when you recite this Qul Huwallahu Ahad. Why do I say Qul? Something must have happened, isn't it true? That the verse was revealed Qul. If you do not know this, you have lost a huge effect of this surah in which, as I said, it is equivalent to one third of the Quran in the authentic hadith. Because it's all about Tawheed, isn't it true? Right? So you do need to know how it was revealed. How in those times the, the Prophet Muhammad was surrounded by the Quraysh. Right? Because they were all boasting about their lords. Oh my lord, my god is Lat, my god is Uzza. And suddenly they turned to Prophet Muhammad and asked him, So Muhammad, tell us who is your god? Uh, we want to know. Cool. Allah revealed immediately, say to them, Huwallahu ahad, he is Allah, ahad, one and only. No lat, no uzad, no multiple gods, right? There's only one, Allahu samad, right? Allah is a self-sufficient master. He need, he need not be maintained, like all your laws, you need to brush them, you need to paint them, you need to, you know, any, any kinds of broken things. I remember, brothers, my colleague is a, my colleague is a non-Muslim, right? He got this tattoo, and then Subhanallah, because I need when I pray I need to cover up. Then one day, um, the cover suddenly pushed the statue, a small statue, down, and it broke. How can I explain to her? It says, "Oh, sorry, I broke your God." How can the bro your God be broken? Right? Isn't your God that you 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 pray to supposed to help you? And this is what happened right? that I, I couldn't explain to her. I, I did, of course. Um, so this is this is the thing that Asamat means eternal ones, that uh, the self-sufficient, do, 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 he does not need any one of us to maintain him, but he maintains all of us. Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. He is he wasn't born, nor can he now would he give birth or could he give birth? There's no equivalent to him. So when you know this, when you feel from the heart, completely, that's why it is a one third of the Quran because it explains everything about Allah. All right? So when you know this, then it, it, when you say in your salah, even if it's a short, such a short verse, it has a huge impact. Right? So so do need to be very detailed about this. And secondly, right? And I discussed before, I think last week lectures or two weeks ago, 
The Quran consists of how many how many chapters? How many surah, brothers? 114. 114 surah. It's not just about three surah or there's just a juzama. You don't need to make the effort to to learn uh, the other parts of the Quran, inshallah, as best as you can, right? How can it be, brothers, in your college, in your secondary school, when you have to learn history, geography, history about King George, about King, I don't know what the King here, and all these things, you're able to do it in the exams. How can about the Quran, you can't even remember what it means, right? Again, we have to prioritize our knowledge of the deen and the Quran. It's very important for all of us in order to have this full effect in the heart when we say this surah, inshallah. Okay? Now the next one, all right? It's about um, some people are obsessed with the sunnah prayers, more than obligatory prayers. Like in Ramadan, right? People are so obsessed in the Taraweh prayer, right? And then, for example, they eat so much, even they can miss the Maghrib prayer, right? And then after that, they rush to the Maghrib prayers. Then Isha prayer in the mosque, they couldn't go because they were too late. And then they, because they want to catch up with the, with the beautiful voices of the Imam for the Taraweh prayer. Taraweh prayer is a sunnah. Better if you are not focused on the Salah, better concentrate on the obligatory obligatory prayer first, isn't it true? Right? Then focus on the sunnah prayers. Right? There's always this extra priority that we do need to maintain. Right? So so something that you do need to ensure, right? The the obligatory prayer must be taken care of first. Then the sunnah prayer, inshallah. Okay. Now, um right. Any questions so far? Before we quickly go into the prayer, inshallah. So these are these are the things, even before we start the prayer, you must take care of this. Always remember, right? You know that well, many people claim that they are praying, but they are still taking corruptions, still doing zina on many occasions, are still gambling, are still doing many things that are disobeying Allah. Because Allah said, in salata tanha, the prayer would prevent immoralities and the prayer would prevent um, any sense of um, disobedience to Allah. Any kinds of disobedience to Allah. So that means if I'm doing this prayer and I'm still constantly doing these kinds of sins, what does it mean? It means that something must be wrong in my prayer. That Allah do not answer me when I say, Allah guide us in a straight way. Right? So when we are continue, I'm not saying that when you do pray, you become an angel. Of course not. We do make sins, but at the same time, when we do sins and have shortcomings, inshallah, we quickly ask Allah for forgiveness. Right? But I'm talking about this major sin, right? About zina, about gambling, about um, what do you call it? Alcohol, right? If we have people are corruptions, people are still doing this then something must be wrong with our prayers, isn't it true? Because Allah wouldn't lie to us. And Allah said the prayer would prevent immoralities and would prevent disobedience to Allah. This is a promise by Allah. Right? So when we say, eh, dina surat al mustaqim Allah will guide us. Guide us to prevent ourselves from committing all the sins. So do, do understand this. That if you are still committing major sins very often even though you are praying then something must be wrong, wrong with your prayer and we do need to correct it inshallah i'm not judging of course right i'm just saying giving advice yeah because some people claim that they are praying and yet they are committing all these sins okay now let's start with the prayer itself if you have any questions do let me know okay now before salah is i said your attire Right? For the woman, right, in general, right, we talked before, uh, it is better to cover your feet. I know some Asian cultures don't, don't cover your feet. If you're going to get married, if you are married, make sure, as I said, your wife follow the majority of opinions in which the feet should be covered, right, before, and we do the salah, right? And dress loosely, as I said before, for the men, if you decide to wear tight t-shirts, make sure the back part, in fact, you're not supposed to wear tight t-shirts anyway, then 
if you want to wear tight t-shirts, then bring at least a uh, thaw to pray when you are in the mosque or somewhere else, right? Make sure the back part is is completely uh, not seen when you when you do your prostration. I'm sure you know something when you do this, right? Uh, it might expose your your part and all this, your back the back part, and that might invalidate your prayer. Right? So do be careful in this. Okay, your your attire. Um, is it part of a, of a sunnah that you should wear uh, the hat? No. Uh, no, no, Sheikh. Yes or no? Uh, no. No, no isn't it true? It's not. It's not a sunnah at all. If you want, alhamdulillah, is good. If if not, it it doesn't mean that a person wearing a hat is has better reward than a person not wearing a hat. The only exception, brothers, is if your hair is so long, right, and big, and the, the hair might prevent your fore, whole forehead from touching the ground. Yes, then you should wear a hat to pull up your hair so that you can hold. Remember, in your prostration, the seven parts must touch the ground, isn't it true? Your forehead and the nose, your arms, your knees, and the two, 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 two feet, right? And this should touch, touch the ground, okay? The next thing is that even before the prayer, right? The mistakes that people are not doing the wudu properly, especially when it comes to the feet, right? I'm not, I'm not talking about wearing socks that they kind of, no, I'm not talking about that. Some people are quickly, even at home, washing their feet, not thoroughly, because Muhammad Sallallahu has warned people, woe to the heels from the fire, when the, the heels are not touched properly, right? Remember, the feet extends from the, between the toes and all the way to the heels, right? So this is how a lot of people made even the time of Prophet understandably because water was difficult to get in those days. But he did warn many times to be careful of the heels because a lot of people, they don't touch the heels when they, when they wash their feet. Okay? Um, the next one, of course, in your brothers, when you're wudu, please do not waste too much water. You do, you do not need to switch on to the fullest volume remember i'm sure you i'm sure you have you have seen how muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam um do the wudu isn't it true have you seen it the video i mean someone of course not him as in the one of the scholars if showed how he do the salah i uh, do the wudu right have you seen it Anybody? I, <clears throat> I, I, I will show you the video one day inshallah right very soon, inshallah. Remind me, please. It's just, yeah, it's just using, using a small bowl of water, isn't it true? Right? A small bowl of water. And, and it's not about the amount of water. It's about the, the pressure that you use. If you clean your car, if you just, from far, you have this hose, the water goes into a car, and that's about it. Would your car be clean? No. It's about wiping it clean and all this, isn't it true? Yeah, so he used so, so he used just a small amount of water, alhamdulillah. Right, so don't be wasteful. People in Yemen and some parts of the world in Africa are not even having water, so don't be wasteful with this water, right? Um, and also, I'm saying this to myself also you do not need to waste water by okay, at night when you wake up, right? I need to on the water first, make sure it's warm. That a lot of water has flown, then warm, then you take wudu after two, three minutes. What is the hadith about um, having wudu in difficult conditions? Including it's having cold water. Yeah, yeah. Sorry? Your, your With the rock. Uh, but isn't it, your, your sin is being forgiven as well, isn't it? Like difficulties. Is that your, your, I, 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 I remind you again by posting this uh, uh, hadith, inshallah. Your, I think your your status be raised, inshallah, right? Uh, one of the things is that when you have when you will do in difficult conditions, difficult conditions has been interpreted as one of them is in cold conditions, like now we are, we are we're having now, right? So even if the water is cold, just do the wudu, inshallah, and that will wake you up. Why you want to waste water? Switch it on first for a few minutes, and then we'll let, let the water waste to flow. And then when it's a bit warm, then you do you do it. Remember this hadith, because it's authentic, inshallah, that in difficult conditions, when you do wudu, your status will be elevated, inshallah. Okay? Um, again, we talk about not praying on time, right? Doesn't mean, brothers, right? And I say this to my, myself especially, 
when you have Zuhur from about 12.15, Asad is about 1.45. Doesn't mean that, as I said just now, that you can pray at 1.30. You can, of course, but it reflects very badly on you, isn't it true? Because when Allah is waiting for you, when there is the Adhan, because Adhan is always there, whether, whether you hear it or not, Adhan is always there, as in, Hayya la salah, come to the prayer. Hayya ala al come to the success, come to Jannah, inshallah. What are you doing? You're sitting in your computer, doing your work, you are still busy with other things. I mean, it, even though, alhamdulillah, you are allowed to do that before, until, until at least until Asar, but you, we should always rush to meet Allah, isn't it? The one who is going to provide us with the provisions at the end of the day, provisions in Jannah, inshallah, who are going to provide us with many, many things. Eyes from Allah, ears from Allah, hands from our Rabb, legs from our Rabb, and yet you are, you are busy with other things than facing Allah. Right? So something which we, we do need to make this effort to really uh, prioritize our prayer. Of course, once in a while, right? Um, perhaps. But not all the time you prioritize your work. When it comes to prayer time, you, you are not prioritizing to meet Allah. Okay? Any questions so far, brothers? Um, Sheikh, yes. I haven't done this myself, but I know a few people that have said um, if you're in public and you want to make wudu and you're not at a mosque, it's okay to pass water over the socks. Now, I've never followed that, but I wanted to ask about that. Yes, in general, there is a condition that before you can do this, right? So before you leave for work in the morning, you need to follow, do the whole wudu first with your leg. That means your leg must be wet, right? Then after that, once you wear the socks, then the second time you do wudu in the office, then you can just, this is your feet, right? Just go on top. Is It is to, it's not to wet your socks, it's just to wipe your socks. Always remember this. You're allowed to. A lot of scholars nowadays, uh, they, they did say also, it's not just about the leather socks, in any socks, as long as a certain thickness. Okay? And so... What if you, so is that even if you break your wudu and then you're doing wudu again? Yes. Okay, so uh, had is authentic, right? If you are not traveling, it is, you can do it for the whole day. If you're on a journey for three days, you can just wipe your socks. Sure. What okay. about when people wipe the shoes as well? Because I've seen people also wiping the shoes. So if you wipe, if you wipe over your shoes, then you pray on it with your shoes. You know, we, we cannot pray with our shoes, isn't it true? Okay. Yeah, you can pray with your shoes, especially in the early days of Islam, people, because as you know, the mosque is not like that. Ours so nice and um, what do you call it, with carpets on this. In those days, they, they have all these, uh, the flooring on the mosque is all made of what do you call it, very hard uh, soil, isn't it true? Right? Mm -hmm. That is why in the, in the old days, in the early days, you can, you can even spit in the mosque, isn't it true? And then make sure, if you come across this hadith, Make sure you spit in front of you and cover cover the spit in the uh, in the uh, sand because it's all made of sand. It's not like now we have a carpet. Now, brothers, when you look at hadith, make sure you know the context of the hadith. In those days, the mosques are different. Don't spit in the mosque. It's ridiculous, isn't it? For now, because it's all carpet now, and you <laughs> don't we we don't we don't actually wear shoes in the mosque, in it? because it's different in those days. Um, wife in the shoes sometimes is thinking like, okay, I'm gonna pray with, or they just wipe the shoes and I'm saying why. Yeah, so so if, if you wipe your shoes, you can, but make sure you pray with your shoes. You cannot wipe your shoes, then after you take out your shoes and pray in your socks. Okay. All right? But the condition is still remain the same. That means in the morning, if you want to wipe your shoes or wipe your socks, you still must have a full wudu wiping your feet. I mean, as in not wiping, wetting your feet. How, how your does it work? So, so, so that means so in the morning, when I take a shower, I always take wudu, wudu after that anyway, right? If I don't do this, and I, that means when I was we I, I'm wearing my clothes, right, and wearing my shoes, I don't have wudu, then I cannot apply that principle. You understand? Okay. Right? So so you do, you must have this, uh, what do you call it, uh, wudu first before you wear your clothes, before you wear your shoes, before you wear your uh, socks and all this. Any questions? So it is. It is. A, it is. It is. A I, I have uh, two questions um, regarding yes. wudu. Yes. Um, 
one is the order in which you do the steps of wudu. Yes. Is it important or is it that you do every step? Mm. Sorry, who's this? Yeah, Sofian. Sofian. Yes. So, so what is so again to answer you this the first question? Mm. We have Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to show us how to do it, isn't it true? Mm. So we have we must follow exactly what he did. Mm. So we cannot start the wudu from the feet, for example. Mm. Right, you must hold exactly in that order. So we, uh, after I know some people got confused, right? After the, after you do you do your uh, face, you want to wipe your hair. Is that that shouldn't be shouldn't be done, right? You sh after your face, then if your your arms first, isn't it true? Then your hair. You need to be in that order, inshallah. Because if if we don't stick to the sunnah, then everybody doing it different ways, isn't it true? That's where the confusion and innovations comes in. Mm. So the order of wudu, how it's done first, it must be done in that way. Okay. Any any the next question? And the second question is about you mentioned earlier about um, your preparations before salah, yes. your clothes being uh, clean and perfuming yourself as, as extra steps that you can do because you're excited to yes. do salah. Let's say the opposite occurs, whereby your clothes are dirty. Does yes. that affect the validity of your salah? Or it's... No, uh, it doesn't affect. Mm -hmm. um, but you you won't feel nice, isn't it true? Mm -hmm. But brothers, uh, uh, good, very good question because I do have people who give an excuse to me. Because sometimes when I, did, I see my clients, I always invite them, come let's pray together. One of them will say, oh, I'm not clean enough. If you got no perfume, just pray, right? Because you have to pray on time. You cannot use this as an excuse. I need to pray at home, go uh, go and clean myself, then I pray, right? I mean, alhamdulillah, the most important thing you do a wudu, that's it, right? It's not perfect as the one who wear perfume, right? Wear uh, nicer clothes and all this, but it's still accepted, of course, inshallah, all right? Does this answer the question? Yes, alhamdulillah, thank you. Okay, alhamdulillah. Any more, anybody got any more questions, brothers? Okay, let, let's continue, inshallah. So this wudu is very important, right? So make sure we, we do it properly. Um, now, question we, we asked questions before, right? For the brothers. And this is where you do need, like I'm not disrespecting any scholars, of course, right? You do need to remember that we are not in a Muslim country, right? Because when if you were asked any scholars, like from Islam QA, right? They would say, for brothers, it is obligatory for us to go to the mosque. Now, in my opinion, my humble opinion is that, yes, if I'm a Muslim country, Pakistan, Malaysia, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, it is obligatory for us men to go to the mosque because mosques are very close, right? Within 100 meters is a mosque and the work that we do, inshallah, I mean, is expected that you and I would go to the mosque to pray on time inshallah right but we are in uk it's a bit different so it's not fair for for the scholars that you know brothers you must go to the mosque all the time some areas are very dangerous to walk right secondly that some mosques are even half an hour away how can i expect it to be especially in, in when you work something so you, I, I, I think if you are in somewhere like like uh, london bridge and all this uh, it's quite difficult to find a mosque nearby right um, so do understand that we are in a non-Muslim country, right? Do our best, of course. I'm talking about pre-COVID-19. COVID-19 for me personally, I, I avoid praying except for, for, uh, for Friday prayers because of the uh, immensity of the um, in, uh, pandemic now. We are in a quite crucial stage, brothers. I have seen, I have heard many clients and even my own students having COVID-19. I've sent food to them and I know how it is, it's affecting many, many, many people. At this moment, I think about two or three people are positive and they have a high fever and all this. Do be careful, right? Especially when you have loved ones um, in your home and all this, uh, that you need to protect the, the, the old elderly ones in your families and all this. Um, so do be careful at this stage, right, about praying in the mosque. Um, but Fridays, usually, if you can, right, go to the mosque. Some mosques are closed, then again, right, um, do whatever things you can in the house, praying the Lord of Prayer. Okay. Um, now, during Salah, right, 
the common mistake people make is I said just now. Firstly, is the loud intention. Intention is a, is in the heart. Firstly, intention doesn't mean that you have to say I intend to pray the whole prayer for the sake of Allah only. There's no certain terms that you can use. Just you can just say the whole full stop, right? But you do need to make a correct intention. It's, you cannot. You shouldn't make an asar prayer intention when actually is zuhur. And it's quite confusing now because the prayer terms are very close. So do be careful about the prayer that the intention that you make, right? Intention is in the heart, it's not um, uttered out loud. And there's no format about it. Because when even when we do wudu, we do need to make intention, is intro. So it's not about, when I eat an apple, I, I didn't say, I wouldn't, need not say I intend to eat this apple. No, it's automatically I want to eat this apple, right? So it's same thing as intention, right? Just need to know the name of the, if you can, of course, the name of the prayer, and then you do the prayer without reciting it loud, okay? Um, another mistake about the prayer, of course, is the khushu. Khushu means complete submission, a uh, complete surrender to Allah. That you and I, we should, uh, we have to try to attempt to do the khushu as best as we can, because the uh, percentage of reward is according to our percentage of khushu. So if a, a, in hadith you and I know, the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself even said, perhaps the person can gain only 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10 percent of the whole prayer. So literally the, the best percentage of any one of us can do is merely 50 percent. Right? So if by the time you say Allahu Akbar and, and by the time you say Assalamu Alaikum, you think nothing else except your work, except your wife, except the TV, except football, then you will get according to what you have focused on or khushur in the prayer. Right? So this is very fundamental. Right? You, do, you do not want to, at the end of the, the day, you, know, you end up losing a lot of reward because your inability to have khushur. Next week, the talk is about how to achieve khushur, inshallah. So do, uh, uh, do uh, attend this talk, inshallah. Right. I won't I won't say much now, but it is a very fundamental part about your your salah. Okay. Now, as I said just now, another mistake is that you don't understand what it means, right? It it destroys the prayer completely in the sense that you don't feel the ni'mah, the blessing of the prayer. Right? It's just what you utter in the mouth. You don't even feel this gratefulness to Allah. You don't feel this that you have done mistakes. You you and as I said just now, brothers, and I think I did a, a talk last week about, about Al-Fatiha, or something like that, right? When you say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, right? We need to understand that we, we are addressing to Allah, we are thanking Allah, the fact that we are standing itself is a feeling gratefulness to Allah for inviting us to pray. Who is Allah? Rabbil Alameen. He is the one who provides me the ability to stand, to see, to, to move my arms in prayer, to do prostration, to work. So so you thank Allah because He's our Rabb. And we thank Allah, alhamdulillah, that we are still breathing, that He's guiding us to the prayer. Without His guidance, we would not be praying. So all this will always be jumping in my mind when we, I say, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. It's all in my mind. This feeling of gratefulness, this, you know, without Him, I won't be here, right? And this hope, inshallah, that this gratefulness would lead me to Jannah. When we say Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, again, we uh, for me in my heart, I will always say, Ya Allah, right? I've done so many things, right? And you you have promised to be merciful to me. And again, it's uh, my hope that Allah has forgive all my sins and shortcomings is in my heart. But when I say Maliki Amidid in my heart, I will say, in my heart, I will say, Oh, I'm, I have to face him and I have to be accountable to him for every single details of my life. I, am I ready ready to face him? If I'm not ready, then I need to quickly uh, rectify things to face Allah because in, on the day of judgment, it's only Allah who will judge us, nobody else, right? So this is the thing that is always in my mind. So other things, when we say other parts of the Quran, recitation, it's always in my mind trying to, this is how khushuk comes in, right? That you are thinking about things in relation to your our relationship with Allah. Inshallah. So this is very important, brothers, that we understand what we are saying. Not just ends in the mouth, but we feel in the heart. The pain of disobeying Allah. Because when a person may truly understood that the one whom we disobeyed or we are sinning, right, is the one, it's not a matter we didn't know about hadith. It's not about the smallness of the sin. 
It's about the greatness of one whom we have disobeyed. It's quite a lot of painful and a lot of regret and a lot of um, ashamed about the things that we have done to disobey him. At the same time, he did give us so many things. Remember, we talked before in Surah number 14, verse number 31. He gave you all that you ask of him. And if you were to count the blessings of Allah, never will you be able to count them. Indeed, a mankind is an extreme wrongdoer, a disbeliever. Sorry, 14 verse number 34. Right? So, so this is something which we, we always have this, um, when you pray, this is always humbling. It's a bit of, we kept call that, well, we have all this dunya outside the prayer time, right? We have to focus on this, this, this. When it comes to prayer time, come back to Allah, right? And then when we disperse, focus on what we have to do. And the next prayer time, come back to Allah. And this, this is a huge beauty, right? How can the Christians compare to us in the sense that they, I mean, if they think that they're in the right path, but their religion is only once a week in the, in the, in the church, Whereas ours is always communicating to Allah, asking for his forgiveness, acknowledging that he's the most gracious, the most merciful, right? Asking him constantly to guide us. So it's, it's, there's a lot of contact with Allah. And this is how we are so privileged, alhamdulillah, and that, that we, we have to thank Allah for giving us this privilege to meet him all the time. Okay? Um... Now, the next one, as I said just now, is about the movements, right? Make sure in the in the prayer itself, the mistake is that people are moving too fast. Without your bones uh, attaching yourself or to, to be still, you move to the next position. It, it must be still, right, before you go to the next position, right? Too many, un, too many unnecessary movements. We discussed before, brothers, the five kinds of movements that people do in a prayer. First of all, the movements that is um, obligatory. What movements are obligatory, brothers? A person doing a prayer? What movements must... I'm, I'm not talking about the outward movements of the hands when you do your... your when you're instead of prayer, something happened and you must do this. What is this? If a, if a child go on a fire or, you know, or... No, or when somebody... a person is pressing in front of you, what must you do? You have to put your hand out. Yes, you must put your hand up and make sure he doesn't pray. And this is, this is, it is not sunnah. It's obligatory. Obligatory means that if you don't do this, you, you have committed a sin. So this is the first thing, kind of movement. is obligatory movement, right? That you must put your hand in front of you if a person passes, especially when you're doing your... Um, what do you call it? The sunnah prayers, right? The second kind of movement is a, a movement that is that is a sunnah. What is a sunnah movement? For example, when, when there's a gap, right? What is the hadith of filling up the gaps? Let's say you're praying, somebody in front of you want to go to the toilet, so you went to the toilet, there's a gap there, just in front of you, right? What is the hadith when you fill up the gaps? Allah will elevate our ranks in Jannah. It's a huge thing, right? And even if it's sunnah, it's a huge thing that you and I will will will, will fill up the 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 rows, inshallah. Now, the straightness of the rows, this let's say this is a big line, right? Long line, sorry. Who do you follow? The one on my right, the one on my left, or let's say this is the center. This is set, I will follow the center. The center. Always the center. Right? So so always remember this. So don't follow the one because it was confusing, right? Always follow the center. So if if the center is on my left, so I need to show make sure that I don't care about them because they need to follow the center. So if everybody can have that kind of knowledge, they know that everybody must follow the center. Center of that means the Imam is here, the center, for example, that everybody must follow the center, center two people to be in a straight row. Okay. Now, any questions so far? Yes. Um, you mentioned somebody leaving to go to the toilet, for example. Yes. Um, what, what is one to do if you are in the middle of the row and you need to go to the bottom? 
then I'm afraid that you just need to go to the, the same row. Just go to the side. Let's say the most like the region spot most, right? Go to the side and you go to the. So you don't push. Let's say it's a Friday prayer, right? You are right in the middle, right? I would just go to the side and go go to the side, and that's why it's like it's not the most very organized. Why? Because at the side there's always this. They, you cannot pray at the side because there's always this place for people to to walk here and there. But but you mentioned that if somebody crosses in front of you, it is your obligation to stop them. To put yeah, them but in obligatory prayers, where is the where is the sutra? The imam. The imam. The imam. The sutra is it? Yeah, imam and sutra. Yeah. Right. So this is the yeah. thing that you, you cannot help it because if you if you, you go, if you got to go, you got to go. Is it natural? Mm -hmm. In fact, we have been encouraged. Even when when the imam started to pray and there is this urge uh, to go to the toilet, we need to go to the toilet first. It's okay with it. We missed one or two raka'ah. Ah. You should go to the toilet first. Rather than, you know, this is where Khushu comes in, right? You cannot, you, you, you're crossing your legs and then you you thinking about yeah. toilet rather than about Allah. Well, okay. Sheikh, like, realistically, if we need to use the bathroom, then we're going to have to do wudu again. Aren't we like, yes. likely to miss the whole prayer? Yes. But what yes. is it? What, what is the intention? What is the hadith about intention? I don't that know. If, if you have an in, a, a intention to do good, and you did not do that 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 good deed, then you get the reward reward of the whole prayer, isn't it true? Or the whole deed? Yeah. Right. But then after that, you still have to do the prayer, right? Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Of course, so yeah. if I had <laughs> intention to go to the Regent's Park Mosque to pray my asar, and because of underground as usual, uh, it was late, delayed, and all this, and I, I missed the whole prayer, I still get the reward of the whole prayer. Wait, Ustaz. Yes. Uh, you know about what you just said. I have a question. Yes. Let's say it wasn't your fault. So you were on your way. You left your house early. You were on your way to the Jama. Yes. But there was uh, like a car crash and yes. there was heavy traffic. Yes. And you couldn't get there on time. Yes. For the Juma prayer. Yes. Does that count as uh, a sin? No, because as I said about the intention, right? The intention. If you have intention to do a good deed and you did not do the good deed. Yes. Through no fault of yours, right? Then you will get the reward of the whole deed, whole whole deed. But if you, if you, if through the fault of yours, for example, you leave. I live in uh, well, the, the time that I leave, go to the central mosque, maybe take about one hour. Juma, for example, is about twelve o'clock. Then I leave at about eleven thirty. It's my fault, is it not true? Right? I don't expect to get reward because well, I leave late anyway, right? But if I leave. The most of to go to the most was about 10 30. I have one and a half hours, I'm still late through no fault of mine from Qadr of Allah, of course. Then I get the reward, inshallah, of the Juma. Okay, no, sorry, I, I need to come back to the to the movements. So, we talk about obligatory movements, which is to prevent people from coming uh, passing in front of you. Second one is the movements of which is Sunnah, which is to fill up the gaps. What is the, the movement that is um, allowed? Is this, for example, it is when your mobile phone rings, right? I don't off. understand What's in many it? cultures, right? This let the phone ring because I'm not allowed to move. You should pick up the phone, switch it off. Don't look who calls, right? Switch off the phone and then put it back down again. You're allowed to do this. It's called muba. Muba means is allowed, right? And we discussed before many times. When somebody, if you are praying alone in the house, your your wife or your mother knock you at the door. And the door is very close by. My door is very very close by here, for example, right? I can just let's say Qibla is I just move sideways, open the door, it's in the hadith, right? Open the door and that's it. And continue to pray again. As long as I do not my face do not leave the qibla direction. So if if my door is behind, I cannot turn around and that's it. I will invalid my prayer. I need I just need to go backwards and open the door and then continue with my prayer. Okay, this is this is called movement that is mubah or allowed, right? Now, what are movements that is uh, makro? Makro means disliked. This is a movement in which, for example, you look at the sky. You know Allah is at the sky, right? When you say Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, you look at the sky. You think that you are talking to Allah, the sky. This is makro. In fact, Muhammad uh, said in the hadith, if you look at the sky too often, you pray Allah will take away your eyes. Isn't it true? In the earth, I think hadith, right? So this macro disliked. What is a movement that is completely haram, not allowed? Anybody? 
too many fidgeting too much too many movements again we, we go to umrah you will see right people wearing uh, the scarf the beard you do this you do this a scarf and you raise a beard again right too many movements makes it haram and may invalidate your prayer so you ha you do to have to be careful with this right um so something in which for, uh, uh, example I forgot to, to mention was about let's like, say your, your child is crying you are allowed to pick up the child and continue praying and this is muba this is allowed okay any questions brothers okay so these are the movements in which you do need to understand right um, that we are allowed to do now was was what is was was whispering from the shaitan Yes, do take note of this. It would sometimes affect your khushu. Isn't it true? Right? We also know there's a shaitan called Khanzab. What would Khanzab do, brothers? Khanzab would open in his hadith, inshallah, right? Or something hadith. Would open up your buttocks. Disgusting. Put your buttocks and you will feel as if you have passed win. Actually, you have not. This concept this is what's worse and Shaitan is always trying to make sure you are distracted, right? Um, and I, I've seen, I'm not, I don't know, but, but I'm sure you may know one or two people in the mosque, in central mosque, keep on saying, Bismillah, 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 Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, because this is what's worse, thinking that um, your, your Bismillah, is not, it's not good enough, you need to repeat again, repeat again and all this. And, you know, it, it is a thing that you do need to overcome with this was was right the whispering of shaitan uh, that is why uh, the sin though, um, but... it is i'm sure you know right i will mention we won't mention names of course right saying this again and again and again again this is was was all right you do need you only need to say once and this is it's a real problem to some people right especially when they take wudu and i know people take wudu 10 minutes right? i thought they're doing kusul in the mosque right 10 minutes <laughs> Because every time oh, I have to do it again because it's not good enough, and then you know, I have to repeat again, and then it, it does affect some people. So I'm Allah, may Allah help them, right? Some people from this was was whispers of shaitan. Shaitan loves these people, right? That they are able to distract them. Okay. So shake. So yes. So if so, you know how sometimes when you're talking, you're like your breath goes by the end of the sentence, and like the the word doesn't. You know how like when we're praying, we like pray very quietly to ourselves. Yes. But if the word doesn't come out completely, that's like it's okay, isn't it? Because it's we say we like we're saying it, it's the intention of saying you you're talking about your yeah, prayer pray the whole. No, just any prayer. Say if I if I'm saying a word or I'm saying like a, a, an ayah of like Qul huwa huwa ahad, and the ending of the ayah doesn't come out verbally, that's completely no, fine. No, no, you need to say it properly. Oh, okay. All right? Okay, never mind. Because right. that will that will really change the meaning sometimes, right? We discussed before, for example, uh, like if you recite Surah Al, Al Insan seventy six, um, and for example, you say Kafuro and Kafuro, make it wrong. It, it changed the meaning completely from a disbeliever to a spring in paradise. No, no. I mean, so okay, fair enough. But I mean, if you don't, so if you say it to your, like. I don't know how to say it. Like, if you, if, if it just doesn't come out verbally, but it's still. Like, what he, what he's trying to say? For example, kulhu Allahu ahad. You say kulhu Allahu ah, and then the word doesn't come out. Let's say you kept short of you, breath. Or but you said it in your head, basically. Like yeah. so, so verbally, would would you need to correct that? Because I, I, you I, you I, do I, need to correct that definitely. Okay. All right. But it need everything needs to come out clearly, but of course. No, this is this is another mistake, right? People are saying this so loud that you can hear the next door can hear. Right, it's so distracting. Right, so so you do need to make sure when you say something, it is clear. Right, but so the the loudness such that it does not disturb the one on your right and on your left. Right, because how can you have khushu when people are you know doing so loud? Fair right, enough. and this is the mistakes that people make. But you do need to make it very very clear because it does affect the meanings and all this. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now. Um, straight rows, right? You do need to maintain straight rows, right? I don't understand why people are not doing in, in, in pre COVID times. It is sunnah to make sure that there's shoulder to shoulder, feet to feet is neutral if you can, right? Um, this is important for you to maintain because it's a sunnah.
So that's why some scholars said, well, because it's dangerous now, because that's why you pray one meter by one meter now, mm -hmm. right? But in an ideal way, you do need to pray shoulder to shoulder because of, again, you want to prevent shaitan from coming to your your ears and whispering to you, isn't it true? So maintaining khushu is very important that you prevent shaitan from uh, coming between you and your neighbor. Okay? Now, after salah, this is when some people, right, when they pray, it's as if you're sitting on a hot coal. What do I mean by this? After salah, so immediately jump up and, you know, go away. You do need to really thank Allah, isn't it true? First of all, why, why do you say Astaghfirullah? Brothers. For forgive you. Why? Because you're always thinking of all things on your salah. Perhaps your prayer is not perfect. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, right? Again, I have too many things in the past. I have so many things, for example, right? Shortcomings. And ask Allah first, Astaghfirullah, and, and you praise Allah, Allah, Ma'anta Salam, Wa Minka Salam, Ta'barakta, Ya Dal Jalalu, Ikram, and all these. This is, even though it's a sunnah, brothers, you do need to thank Allah for allowing to pray, isn't it true? And something that we, a lot of our people uh, have seen it, we immediately after Salam, quickly, boom, as if you're sitting on a hot coal, it's very hot, you need to go, right? Take your time. So, what if it's an emergency? Not every day is an emergency, is it? Not five times a day is an emergency. No, I'm it? saying, I'm saying if it is. Of course, if you have to go, right, um, that, uh, then you need, you need to go. If you have to go, you've got to go, right? But as far as you can, as many times as possible, inshallah, stay to do your... What is the reward of saying subhanallah 33 times and alhamdulillah 33 times and uh, Allahu Akbar 33 times and la ilaha illallah wa la sharika la lahul mulku wa la ilaha illallah wa la sharika What is the reward? The only thing is forgiven. Yeah, it's a huge thing. Yeah, minus is forgiven. When you say ayat al kursi, what is the reward? Ayat al kursi? What is the reward? Ayat al kursi? Is that, is that the only thing separating you from death? From Jannah is death? Yes. Okay. Right? And as long as you are in that state of prayer, you and the angels were still making dua for you for forgiveness. Can you imagine? So the longer you stay, the better it is. Of course, in an ideal world, is good, it's easy, but for us who are working, it's a bit tricky, right? That's why I choose to be self-employed because I can I can stay as much as I want to make dua to Allah, right? Um, so life is a choice, brothers, right? Um, not everybody can be self-employed, of course, right? But but if, if you think that there's so many distractions in your life, right? You do need to make these this quick decisions, right? To stop these distractions and ensure that you focus on your salah, like it or not, right? The first thing, as I said just now, that we're going to face Allah on a day of judgment is the salah. How can I explain to Allah that Allah I can't have khushu because of this, this, this? There's no excuse at all. Okay? Now, um, and of, of course, the second mistake is, of course, people think, oh, it's just a sunnah prayer. It's not important, subhanAllah. Right? If only we know the... Um, the lack of khushut that we do in our prayers, right? If you only know the many shortcomings in our prayers, we would want to do the sunnah prayers, isn't it, right? Because sunnah prayers, inshallah, is to patch up all these uh, shortcomings in our prayer. Missing prayers, late prayers. Is this... So the sunnah prayers, what, what is another function of sunnah prayers or any sunnah deeds, brothers? What's the other so function? Make up deficiencies. Yeah, I, I thought just now, but other than, after that, what are the functions of the sunnah? Is it to expiate sins? Sorry? We'll be built paradise. Uh, no. It's something in German, like you build a, what you call a plant for your... No. It's a hadith. You're not, I'm, I'm not just talking about a sunnah press. Any sunnah, what is the fun function? If you miss... Um... If Allah uh, you are, um... The hadith goes like this, right? Allah said in Hadith Qudsi, right? right? That I love my servant when he did the obligatory deeds. But I love my servant even more when he did the voluntary deeds. So much that I will come the eyes that he hear, the ears that he's, uh, eyes that he see, ears that he hear, and the hand and the feet that he use. That means literally, we will be guided by Allah, right? So the more sunnah we did, we get Allah's love, and guidance, inshallah, right? So, so do understand about this. Of course, as the brother said, the sunnah prayers, for example, you do, you do the 12 sunnah prayers, you get the house, <coughs> the day, 
right? You do two before the uh, the whole. Uh, sorry, four before the whole. Uh, two after of uh, four before the whole and four after the whole, right? You get what? What is the reward? A uh, house. No, that is. The, oh, sorry. She is now the twelve. Right. What's four before the whole? Four, four after the whole, brothers. Uh, forgiveness, no. Like almost uh, there. Protection like from punishment of the hellfire. Aren't we going to do that? Because the risk of us doing hellfire is quite a lot, isn't it? True, although do not show us its mercy. So I would just spend a, spend another two minutes instead of doing two rakah <coughs> or uh, after the hor, I do another two, just another two minutes or three minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a huge thing to do, right? And then, of course, the most important sunnah prayer right. after obligatory prayers is. Brothers. Uh, yeah, the Qiyam, the night prayer. Right? We can do Qiyam, Qiyam now. You cannot wake up in the morning, right? So, but you can you better <coughs> do it, sleep first and then wake up in the last third of the night. For Fajr is very easy now. Fajr is about 625, right? So, you can just wake up about 530, even 6 o'clock and just pray your Sunnah prayer as much as you can, inshallah. Two Raka'ah Sunnah and one with the minimum, inshallah. Okay? So, don't, don't miss up this opportunity because Allah is waiting for us every night, right? In Hadith. What did he say? Where among my servants who want to uh, ask for my forgiveness, I'll forgive him. Where among my servants who ask me for anything, I'll give him anything. In the authentic hadith. And this is where we should take advantage of this. Inshallah, every night. That's why, again, it's, it, it, for me, whenever I do my tahajjud itself, I always make one of my du'a, my, my, my du so oh Allah, invite me to do tahajjud all the time until my last breath. Right, so I will always make dua myself because I need Allah to invite me first, right, to face Him in the last hour of the night. So, okay. I've got a question. Um, yes. You know, let's just say you're praying your Sunnah prayer, and then um, basically the the Fard Salah starts. So, what would you do in that case? Would you just end it, or yeah, you're talking about which which prayer? Let's just say uh, Fajr, for instance. Yes. Say, uh, uh, so like you just entered the mosque, you pray in the two sunnah prayers and the yes. imam started the uh, fourth prayer. So okay, good, good question, have... right? If if you are in the mosque, right? And this is uh, so irritating, sorry, uh, Mubin. This is your Bangladeshi mosque sometimes, right? Imam already praying, uh, uh, Ikhama started and then you enter the mosque. Instead of joining the, the, the prayer, you are doing your own sunnah prayers, right? It's not allowed at all. And this is very clear when the, when the karma starts, you should. So when I'm doing my second rakaah sunnah, for example, right? And then the, <coughs> the, the karma just started, I will just finish it quickly, inshallah. But if I'm, I just started, I, sh I should just join. I don't need to say salam, I just, just join to join the con 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 congregation prayer. And when you come in and the <coughs> imam has started to pray, don't go to the side and pray your sunnah for the fajr. You can always pray sunnah, inshallah, after the obligatory prayer. How can you concentrate uh, on this? I meant, I meant by saying like when you, you already start your sunnah and then the imam starts start the fadl. I'm not saying just before. Okay, so so I said, I said just now, right? When you just started and the iqamah started, then you need to just join the prayer. Okay. Right? Um, but if you are in a second raka'ah, then quickly finish up quickly. That's the rule of thumb. Okay. Right, because uh, you know you 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 do need to uh, join a prayer quickly, okay? and soon I can always do later. But brothers, if you do not have not done the uh, tahatul masjid, and the imam has started, you do not need to do tahatul masjid again. And in fact, you are not supposed to do that. Right, tahatul masjid is supposed to be the first thing you come and you pray when the imam is not praying in congregation. Okay. Any questions? I hope today's talk is. Um, Beneficial, inshallah, for all of us, right? To uh, how, how, revise how long, our mistakes sorry. on the prayer. Sorry. How long can you delay the sunnah prayer? Which which prayer are you talking about? Say any sunnah prayer. Say what the, the the four you do after uh, Dhuhr. I think as long as it's before the the next prayer, inshallah. Okay. Right. So for me, uh, you know, right, brothers, a good question. Because it is it is a sunnah to pray sunnah prayers at home. And this is where some of the Asian mosques they always pray in the mosque sunnah prayers, which is, which is which is good, alhamdulillah. But it's better to pray at home, right? So by the time I reach home, sometimes it may be half an hour later, 
or if I decide to go shopping to go to buy some supermarket and it maybe one hour later. But as long as it's before the next prayer, inshallah, I can still do my sunnah prayer at home. Okay, any more questions, brothers? Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide us in the right path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us um, good health. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala improve our prayer, uh, correct our prayers, allow us, invite us to pray on time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, correct our, our deficiencies in our prayer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, grant all of us good health and iman and taqwa mm -hmm. and grant all of us jannah to the dawah subhanakum rabbi hamdi ka shadu ala ila anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh inshallah we'll see you tomorrow uh, for yeah. our sessions on youtube yeah jazakum allah khair assalamu alaykum assalamu alaykum assalamu alaykum